I don't see them, Boris. Me too. I guess they're buried alive. Aren't we going to do something? Of course. Here, blow taps in E-flat. So farewell. And goodbye. Down you go. In the snow you must die. With the moose berry bush. The bitch. Moose berry bush. That doesn't rhyme. Natasha, they still have the bush. You mean... Yes, we must save them. Again? And so the two spies furiously set to work to dig our heroes out of the snow pile. Well, moose will be out in a minute. Here is squirrel already, and he has mooseberry bush. Good, then we don't need moose. And Boris raised his shovel and brought it down with a crash. Gee, you're shivering, Sir Hillary. He's just my old malaria. Well, let's go, it's getting dark. The party pressed onward and suddenly came upon a set of giant footprints. They are tracks of the abominable snowman. The, the abominable, abominable snowman? Yes. A fierce man-eating monster. I still say they look like your hoof prints, Bullwinkle. Boris, I don't think we can fool them much longer. No, Squirrel is too smart for us. Yes, he's got sneaking hunch there is no such animal as the abominable snowman. There's only one way to convince him. And that is? He's got to see abominable snowman. But how? Easy. Tonight, after they are in bed, you put on white sheet over your head and... <laughs> I get it, darling. I am the snowman. If this doesn't get rid of them, my name isn't Sir Hillary Pushemov. And it isn't. And so late that night, as our heroes lay in their tent. Say, Rock, do you think there might be such a thing as a man-eating abominable snowman? Of course not. How about a moose-eating abominable snowman? Oh, no. No, Bullwinkle, I still think those were your footprints. But just think if they weren't. Look at the size of that thing. Anybody with a foot that big must really be a monster. Go to sleep, Bullwinkle. There's no such thing as a... Ooh. What's that? It's just the wind, Bullwinkle. Oh, I could have sworn it was a... Ooh. There it goes again. It's just the wind, Bullwinkle. With galoshes on? Sure enough, just outside their tent stood a pair of huge overshoes and towering above them an enormous white figure with glowing eyes and teeth made of coal. Looks just like a snowman. A, a snowman. snowman! And the boys leaped out of their tent and sped off into the night. <laughs> Look at them go. Natasha, my dear, you did marvelous job. What do you talk, darling? I haven't started yet. Natasha, this is you? Who else? Then this is who? One guess, darling. The uh, abominable uh, 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 snowman. And the two spies followed our heroes into the night as the huge creature turned its baleful eyes on them and lumbered forward. Is he following us, Bullwinkle? I'm not even going to turn around to find out. Even Boris Badenov, who thought he had made up the snowman out of sheer make-believe, had to admit that there was such a thing. But Boris, a live man-eating snowman, such a thing couldn't be. You give me couldn't be, he give me is. And as the four fleeing figures scrambled over the ice, the snowman steadily gained on them. Wait, wait, hold up. What is it, Sir Hillary? There's only one way for any of us to escape. What's that? Somebody's got to stay here and fight it out with snowmen. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. How's about you staying? That don't make no sense at all. Whatever we do, we better do fast. He'll be here in a minute. Well, there's only one fair way to decide who stays. We draw straws. Boy, it's not that. Long straw gets to be big hero, okay? Well, I suppose that's fair enough. But where are we gonna get straws? <laughs> Just so happens I got some right here. Yeah, funny how that works out. Everybody take one. Princess Bobolis, Squirrel, me, and now Moose. Boy, it sure is a long one. Yeah, that's the first straw I ever seen I could pole vault with. You won! Congratulations, old fellow! Yeah. I'm just lucky, I guess. Now, if you'll excuse us. Well, I suppose it's up to me, Rocky. I... Rocky? Yoo-hoo! Rocky! Gee, he's gone. Yes, Bullwinkle stood alone as the snowman came nearer and nearer. I feel just like what's-his-name with the bridge. When the snowman was within range, Bullwinkle jabbed at him with his makeshift weapon. Unfortunately, the telescoping straw did just that. What do you know? I got a short straw after all. 
Okay, cold and ugly, pull him up. Just then, the moose heard a welcome voice from above him. Bullwinkle, stand aside. Yes, high on a nearby cliff was Rocky the Flying Squirrel. Of course, our hero would never desert a friend in need. Out of the way, Bullwinkle. Here I come. And from his high perch, Rocky launched himself like a guided missile directly at the huge form of the abominable snowman. And then... The impact was tremendous. So severe was the shock that in Japan, seismograph needles jumped right off the paper. In Honolulu, there was a snowstorm. And in Waxahachie, Texas, for the first time in 17 years, it rained. Back in Pottsylvania, Rocky pulled himself out of the snowbank and dashed to his pal. Bullwinkle, speak to me. Speak to me. Uh, certainly. What would you like to hear? Oh, thank goodness you're okay. Oh, I'm fine, but uh, he's having a little trouble. Sure enough, the abominable snowman was behaving very oddly. What do you suppose he's saying? I don't know, but he's saying it in two voices. What you say to us, snowman? I said, get me out of here. Bullwinkle, I recognize that voice. You sure it's not just his stomach growling? Get me out of here. Bullwinkle, that voice belongs to Gidney the Moon Man. Great gobs of goo, Rocky. Get me out of here. That's our friend Gidney the Moon Man. But how can we get him out? He's been at by the snowman. No, Bullwinkle, he is the snowman. Only half, Rocky. I'm the other part. Hey, that sounds like, like... The name is Cloyd. Gee, you sure sounds like him, too. Here, Bullwinkle, help me tear this cover off. And when Rocky zipped open the cover, sure enough, there were the two moon men, Gidney and Cloyd. Whatever were you doing in that getup? Tell him, Cloyd. Well, I... I thought it would be a good joke. Joke? It like to scare us out of seven years' growth. Yeah, our two guides still haven't come back. Sure enough, Boris and Natasha were at that moment heading over the hill and into the sunset. We left Mooseberry Bush. Don't talk to me about trifles. But what we do when Central Control ask questions? What else? We look him straight in the eye and lie. But how come you're clear over here in Pennsylvania, Gidney? Yeah, last we heard you were knocking them dead at Las Vegas. That was the trouble. And as they trudged down the hill, Gidney told the boys his story. 